Emily Wilkins is live from a radio communications facility in Rochester, New York. Emily. Hey, Tyler. Well, yeah, we are here in Elfrey Harris, where they create and build these military tactical communication radios that are used on the front lines in Ukraine. You know, this facility, it's got about 4,000 employees here in Rochester, and they've gotten about several hundred million dollars in federal funding since the Ukraine-Russia war began. But of course, that federal funding has now run out. And Congress is struggling on whether or not they should be passing another $60 billion in funding for Ukraine. L3 Harris's president of communication systems, Sam Mehta, said that the delays have led to complications in the economy and in how the company functions. He says that it's not only impacted this facility here, but it's had an impact on this facility's seven, four, four, 470 suppliers, many of which are small and mid-sized businesses. It will cause them to make some very, very tough decisions about employment. It'll cause them to have tough decisions about whether or not they can reinvest in capital, in capacity. We've also heard from them that it's created a little bit of concern about whether or not they even want to continue to be in the defense industry with this amount of unpredictability. At this point, about 61 percent of all funding that Congress has approved for Ukraine has actually gone to U.S. companies like this one here. Still, there is a lot of opposition in Congress, particularly among Republicans, to passing any more funding. Still, House Speaker Mike Johnson says he wants to find a way to get additional aid to Ukraine. It's just a matter of how. And he's going to be trying to figure out exactly how to get his Republican colleagues on board. They return to Congress tonight after a two-week break. And guys, this is one of the top priorities. We're expecting to hear a lot more in the next two weeks about how they plan to get this done. You said they have how many employees there and how many of them are directly tied to um, to uh, work on, on Ukraine? Well, it's about 4,000 employees. I mean, they create these radios here that are used for Ukraine, but they also create radios that are used in the U.S. And actually, some of the technology that they send to Ukraine, they get feedback from Ukrainians, and they're able to further develop the U.S. product based off of that. We do know that this facility did ramp up the number of employees that it had when the war in Ukraine began, and some of that federal funding began coming in. It's a little difficult to say exactly how many, since they have various customers. But Sam Mehta did tell me that a lot of the contractors, they call him up and they say, hey, what's going on with this federal funding? We need to know. We need to plan. And that could impact a lot of the employees for the contractors down the line. There's really a big supply chain element here to this story. Emily Wilkins, thanks for bringing us that story.